Hi friends, um, so just a quick disclaimer, this video is going to include pretty in-depth discussion and imagery of surgical procedures, hospitals, incisions, sutures, blood, medical terminology, and all that stuff, so please feel free to click away now um, if any of that could potentially upset you. Uh, my entire top surgery experience is my own and was thoroughly discussed and planned ahead of time with my surgical team and caretakers. What worked for me may not work for others, and what didn't work for me may work for others. No surgery experiences are the same, all bodies are different, and my only purpose of this video is to share my story. So let's get right into it. So, what? What's going on up here? I'm awesome. Nice. <laughs> I'm getting my titties removed. I think a lot of top surgery videos focus a lot on the actual surgery day or like befores and afters, but I wanted to spend some time kind of showing off um, what we got before my surgery, um, what worked, what didn't work. So later on in the video, we are going to talk about um, what was helpful in all of our shopping trips and what ended up not being so helpful. Um, oh yeah, my uh, husband is here. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> So yeah, I definitely want to spend some time talking about the preparation and all of that. So we are here at the hotel. Yes. It is very nice. It is a suite just outside of the city in Lombard. And we have everything unpacked. So now today we are going to get some food. Yes. And get some rest watch some TV and tomorrow at 10 a.m. tomorrow at 10 a.m. we'll be at the hospital. August's mother in the duration of I of me knowing her she well as the duration of I that I've known her she does she does leg lifts every single day and we're about to go to bed because August's surgery is tomorrow in less than 12 hours. And I was like, Nikki, did you do your leg lifts? She informed me that she didn't. And that explains why what? Please pray for me because her bowels are upset because she didn't, <laughs> she didn't do, do leg, 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 leg lifts. <laughs> <laughs> it's five o'clock in the morning. No, it's like seven something. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. This is the start of our day. And damn, I look good. <laughs> Quick, stick your tongue down my throat. <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is it. Go. Oh, it's that fourth one. Oh. <laughs> um, I am fine, I think. <laughs> um, you know, had a lot of anxiety, but we'll get it taken care of. Don't cry. Don't tell people it's gonna make you sleepy. And he's all marked up, but you can kind of see it. Mm -hmm. It's happening. But, um, we are just waiting for him to be taken back, and then we will go to the surgery waiting room, and I will sit with Nikki for six hours. Why are you going to do that when I'm sitting here concentrating? Look, did you feel it's kicking in or not yet? Mm -hmm. It is? See? Oh, we gave you the good stuff, not the you. one that comes from China. Thank we'll be here. <laughs> So I did real quick want to talk a little bit about my specific surgery. Um, I had surgery on January 24th of 2020. Great time to have surgery. Um, my surgeon was Dr. Corcoran out of UIC in Chicago. I had a double incision with nibble grafts. Um, I was out of work for about six weeks, give or take. And it took about five months from my first con consultation to actually um, the day of the surgery. It was about a five month wait. 
and that's just with between insurance and and all the little fine details and uh it cost me zero dollars because i'm poor <laughs> hey bud <laughs> how do you feel have you been sick did they give you something for it well, no shit. So as far as the drains go, um, different people do different things with them. We just pin them up here because okay. it works, but a lot of people will either wear, wear like um, sweatpants and pop these in the pockets as sweatpants, mm. or use an old hoodie and pop a hole in the back sure. so okay. that they can sit in the kangaroo pouch of the hoodie. Okay. Okay, whatever you want to do. Or you can just pin them up to this. It doesn't okay. matter. Just, before we do one, would you ask somebody to grab us a couple ice packs so I can ice show them how to oh, use yeah, ice yeah, packs sure, if sure. they want to do it? I'll go grab it. We're going to take, as we take this down, you may feel things move underneath there, okay? You doing okay? Mm. And there's three of these hooks and eyes. Okay. Did they bring some more of that out from the no, OR for you? No, no. Okay, yeah, I'll go. Get, get him four more sheets. Four more sheets of the... This foam, mm -hmm. it's important. It's rest on foam. Rest on R -E -S -T -O -N. foam. R-E-S-T-O-N. Okay. Okay. The rest on foam is there mostly to get these sides where we did that little bit of side work and mm -hmm. keep yes. some pressure on yes. them. Yes, okay. okay. Uh -huh. Now, it will, ice packs and these won't fit at the same time, so you need to have one or the other in, okay? Uh -huh. Do you like ice packs? Do you like cold? No? Okay. But if, if you do decide, take these with you, because cold, I think, works just about as good as anything else. And so if you're going to do the cold, you put, the, put it here on top of the mm -hmm. cotton. Okay. And then you don't use this, okay? Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. So put that in your goodie bag. Okay. Go home with. Sure will. Right there for now. I think you can also go to, like, um... CVS or Target and get the gel packs. Mm. I think those fit in better than okay. these big bulky things. Okay. okay, so underneath here is where the business is, so to speak. There's mm -hmm. the business. Bud, it looks so good. It looks good. Oh, are you yeah. happy or are you okay? <laughs> yep, it's all good. It looks great. Oh, wow. So you may have little bits. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah. Okay. And the incisions are underneath these tapes. Those tapes are there instead of outside stitches so he doesn't get the little cross patches. It looks patches. great. Okay. So it do looks not take so good. Off. Okay. You can buy these. How often should this happen? This whole changing? At least once a day. Okay. So changing everything like this that you're showing us mm -hmm. once a day. No showers until you see me back. No showers. So like a sponge bath? Yeah, a sponge bath. Sponge baths. It's... Kind of it's weird. I'll give you another no, one. No, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. I got it. Yeah, and we. Then, uh, so make sure that those are sitting along the side. Okay. And we'll get you a couple more of these pieces. And as you'll see, you can, if there's like things that are poking or stuff, you can mm -hmm. trim it. It's okay. totally do it yourself. Like, DIY. Like yeah. Like Just shape as comfortable as possible, but. Mm -hmm. But providing compression. Mm -hmm. And right. then. Now, is this always going to be like a two person thing? Um, no, because he'll be able to help you eventually. Okay. Like, he'll be able to hold that stuff in, but if you can try getting help. that all the way, oh, let me, I'm right there, five minutes down the road. Here, let's try getting that a little further onto the side so they're not overlapping each other. Nice, much, and that might make our job easier. There you go. Mm -hmm. There we go. No. <laughs> So I had a very, very good experience um, throughout pretty much my entire surgery from first consultation to my surgery day and all my post-op appointments, except for um, just this one portion, <laughs> which uh, Jonathan can also speak on. I feel like they rushed my ass out of the hospital. From when I woke up, I was like vomiting and not handling anesthesia very well. I was not all the way awake and conscious. And um, they were pretty much pushing me to get dressed and get up and not lay back down and not rest at all. 
you know, and mm -hmm. and just kind of push me out the door. What do you think? Yeah, because we got to the recovery. We finally found you. You were still asleep. Kind of woke up, and I had to quickly go get the car. It just happened too fast. It was. It was. I yeah. should have had more time. Yes, I agree. Uh oh. Maybe just spelling. So. Mm -hmm. How do you rate your experience so far? So good. <laughs> how do you rate your experience right now? Can I tell you? When I woke up, I felt like I couldn't breathe. I was going, uh, I, not today, but when I was, or not right now, but when I was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I was going, uh, and they were like, what's wrong? I said, I said, I don't know. I fell back asleep. <laughs> so I, um, I was, uh, when I woke up, I started puking, and then I heard them say, Jonathan, something Jonathan, and I was like, <laughs> my fiance. I remember rolling my eyes and hearing you say something, and I just barely remember talking to the doctor, and then I remember she started taking things off, and I looked down, and I saw, like, where my nipples were, they were right here. <laughs> oh, this way. I started crying and I'm just glad it's over. It looks great. Mm -hmm. I'm really I glad it's over. It all felt um, pretty surreal. I think we could both say the actual day of the surgery. Um, this entire, as you can probably see on my face, this entire process <clears throat> was, it, I just felt very vulnerable and very fragile. And every single step of the way, I was just, like, scared. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pretty much from start to finish until my drains were out. Like, everything felt really scary. There was my mom. Um, being my mom. <laughs> um, but we were just kind of checking it out. This was same day of the surgery. Um, I think... What were we doing here? Um, I think Maybe. you wanted to see your chest. I think it was just because taking a look, yeah. We woke up and we saw your chest, but you were still out of it, so you yeah, didn't yeah, get yeah. to see it. So, yeah, I and I like, think yeah. we just wanted to make sure things were in place. And, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, we were just kind of checking out, letting everything just drop to the floor, apparently. Mm -hmm. Um, but I cannot explain to you how anxiety inducing it was to see the drains and know that that was like in a foreign object inside of my body yeah and i was always afraid not this is not a read i was afraid that you were going to do it wrong because you know like none of us are trained medical professionals so i was always afraid that something wrong was going to happen mm -hmm. but i feel like i did a very good job you did you absolutely did no joke about that here's my mom again um but yeah, it, it was uh, crazy. And I had also never seen um, anybody, any surgeon decide to put the drains in the middle of the chest. Yes. And she actually said at one of my post-op appointments that um, people, surgeons, specifically male surgeons who put the drains on the side um, are mean. And they have never had a chest surgery before because that's a really uncomfortable place to have them compared to the middle of the chest. Because you got to keep your elbows in. Yeah. What the hell is this bullshittery? It's the cage so that my very loving cat doesn't hop up on me. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. We're home. <laughs> we are home. This did not last long, and we ended up going to my parents' house <laughs> to yes. stay. Because in this apartment, um, we had an iron spiral staircase that uh, led up to the bedroom and the bathroom. And one day when I was ambitious and going downstairs by myself, I fell down the stairs, mm -hmm. down like four or five stairs, and pulled my arm. So from then on until my drains were out, we stayed at my parents' house for the duration of my recovery. We didn't end up uh, filming a whole lot at my parents' house, but we did want to at least film the morning routine that we had down to pretty much a science, <laughs> yeah. uh, where John had to take care of every uh, step of my hygiene process, because I couldn't even brush my teeth. Yeah. 
because the shaking of like the arm movement of brushing my teeth was just too much so you end up having to brush my teeth and wipe my ass every day yes how did that feel it was fine it didn't bother me <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think any, either of us... Of course, I was kind of like, oh, it's embarrassing, you know. But um, it was just part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, you took it like a champ. But what was it like having to having to care for me every day? It was... Mm, I think you kind of enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. You like doing fun. medical stuff. <laughs> I do. Yeah. But um, every single day, we started off with teeth brushing and putting dry shampoo in the hair because I could not wash my hair at all. Nope. Um, I couldn't even put on my own deodorant or anything, so this is John wiping and, you know, getting the iodine and stuff that was on my body off of it. That's me freaking out because I didn't know what the iodine was. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so then we would just kind of wipe, wipe everything down. But this is, um, sort of a little look into the process of changing my bandages. Yes. Which every single time, I don't know if you can like see my breathing in my face, but it was fucking terrifying. Yes. I hated every day. And this was still early on with us changing your bandages. Yeah, this was only like day two or three. Yes, because eventually I completely undid the compression vest that the doctor gave you. Yeah. And then... Um, we also had to take a break from it because mm-hmm. it smelled. Yeah, it's We'll talk more about that later too, but it, it stank. <laughs> And those are the foam pieces. Um, that was mostly for the lipo that they did on the side, just so I wouldn't have a ton of extra tissue on my side. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was the compression the foam that they would put underneath. Because, like, you're going to see in a minute where I'm trying to, like, bring both sides of the compression vest together. Mm-hmm. And I kind of have to, like... We had to, like, lift it up and over. Yes. Because everything would shift. It just was a nightmare yeah. So later on, I got smart. We got kind of smart with everything towards the end. Yes. And then it was like, oh, fuck. Now that we've got it perfect down to a science, it's we're done. It's over. <laughs> that compression vest sucked, but it honestly, um, it made the anxiety and everything kind of go away. It made it a lot better. Yeah. So here is uh, where that content warning is going to come in for blood and all that. Um, I didn't really have pretty much any complications during my healing except for this. Um, I was probably trying to move a little bit too much too quick and I ended up pulling a stitch out of my um, drain. Uh I ended up stretching it and it caused it to bleed for a few days and that was a little bit stressful. But honestly, that was kind of the only hiccup. Uh I was pretty lucky. Okay, I'll take the bolster off once uh, once Dr. Corcoran takes a look. But okay. everything looks really the what? Good. The what? The bolster? The the little yellow piece. That's oh, what we call, oh, what we cool. call that. The We're gonna actually see your nipples. Yeah. They just scare me. I'm not actually in pain. Okay. That's why every time he changed the bandages, he always had to. Uh, That's he was like, "What? What?" And I'm like, "No, I'm just shit. nervous." Okay, sorry. Okay, all right. Let me grab Dr. Corcoran. Okay. It'll just be a, just a few minutes, and then we'll come in and finish off the rest. Okay. okay everything looks great though. And then we'll get the drains out as well. So we're going to finally see his nipples after 10 days. So was that gauze, like, white and then, like... No, it, start, it starts yellow. We It's it's yellow in its normal form. Oh, okay. Because I was like, was this white and then they just drenched it in iodine? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's, like, pinchy. Okay. There's one. What's it look like? Looks good. <laughs> Yeah, it looks... I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's there. I fandangled the zipper before I can do it again. <laughs> I'm just, well, no, I'll go around this way. Come on. How are you doing there, bud? Good. All right, bolsters are off. Oh, those look phenomenal. Yeah, they don't look so. pretty yet, but they do look phenomenal. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's why yeah. I said, as long as they look the way they're supposed August to. August asked me, I said, well, they don't look like mine, but he said they look good, so <laughs> well, uh, I'll go we'll, for we'll, it. We'll, we'll take a closer look at them. I am going to go get some fresh Steri strips, so Dr. Mickel, if you mm-hmm. can take those ugly, yeah. gross ones off, we'll get a fresh set. All done on this side. That was it? Yes. Oh my gosh, I thought you were taking a steady strip off. Oh. Okay, one more. Taking it? Yeah. Yeah. All done. I didn't even feel that. 
Sorry. <laughs> I have myself so worked up thinking that I was going to be the worst You're thing. You're all worrying. I told you it's not going to hurt me. <laughs> so, how did you stitch him? Because the line's so small. If I told you, we'd have to kill you. Oh, um. <laughs> it also helps um, take the tension off a little bit, which tends to help the scars stay this narrow, thin line that we would like them to stay. Okay. One more. Smile. <laughs> I think they took a picture, right? Probably. I don't know. It's on camera, so you can see it. So later. anyway, I don't. You know that worry you had about having about wings off of the back. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be it's your just, deal. Mm-mm. -mm. Okay. Looks normal. <laughs> it looks like a that's great. Now change. your nipples will be then baby butt pink for a while, and then they will gradually mm -hmm. go back to their original color. And that takes roughly how long? Uh, case by case. Case by case, yeah. So I had a post-op appointment today, and originally I wasn't even going to go. I'm going to be super honest. We were, like, talking about not even going because um, we had just gone last week, and it was like nothing important was going on. It's not like anything needed to be, like, added or taken away, or there was nothing, like, new that was happening with me. So we were like, mm, we might not even go. I'm glad we went <laughs> because... We um, ended up taking off my stereo strips completely. Those came off like all together. And then we started scar care, which I was actually like really nervous about. I feel very exhausted and in a lot of pain. And um, I have to do it for 10 minutes on each side. So it's a long and painful process and by far the worst part of this whole experience. I would like I would rather still have the drains in than have to go, and then have to ever do that again. But I have to do it every day <laughs> until things are completely healed. So, um and not to be gross, but <laughs> I absolutely at the appointment say asked my my surgeon. I said I even started off that way too. I said not to be gross, but um as long as nothing is being strained or pulled or touched in any way, are we okay to, like, have sex again? Like, are we clear to, like, have sex? And at first she started to kind of say no. And I was like, I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> like, I can't do this anymore. Take it back. I don't want it. Um, and she kind of started to hesitate. And she said, well, as long as there are still like bandages and there's no risk of like skin pulling apart. Basically like I've still got my bandages on and like foam support. Like you can kind of see it here, like foam support and my vest on, like it's fine as long as we're like gentle and I'm being honest about my abilities and my comfort, you know? So that was nice. <laughs> so after this point, things kind of slowed down. There wasn't really anything new happening um, other than my nipple scabs falling <laughs> off, <laughs> um, which was a little bit more gruesome than I expected, even though they did kind of prep me by saying, like, it's going to be scary, but I promise you it's okay. Because what uh, came off was this. Um, <laughs> nothing could have prepared me for that morning when I woke up and that's what was on the bandage. Um, but it was just kind of a wet scab that fell off. Um I don't know what my expectations were, but it was not that. <laughs> uh, and she was not lying. What was underneath it was baby butt pink, and it was like this for a very long time. I still haven't um, fully gotten all of my color back, and I am now uh, nearing like a year and 10 months yeah. post-op, um, and all my color still isn't back. So, um, Other than that, after my nipple scabs came off and uh, my nipples started to fully heal... I did have what I thought was kind of concerning and scary, but it ended up just being like a little hole in my incision where a stitch was working its way out. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. And, and I remember immediately emailing every doctor and every trans guy <laughs> I had ever known um, and asking them if this was normal. But so it was you just... had like dissolvable stitches inside. Yes. On the and inside. And that's what was working its way out. Yeah. Just one that hadn't dissolved all the way. 
So like I said in the beginning, I definitely wanted to go over um, some of the things we got that were helpful and that were not helpful. So this is a little list of the things that we got. On this list, um, we probably only used about 50% of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, um, you know, like obviously the hygiene products and the clothes and stuff like that was all stuff that we used. As far as like the neck pillow, the grabber, the bath scrub brush, uh, the micellar water, hydrocortisone cream, we didn't really use any of that. No. Um, and it wasn't until we were done that we were like, wow, these are the hundred different ways that we could have done this. Yes. <laughs> so um, I definitely wish we would have gotten way more nonstick gauze mm -hmm. instead of an assorted gauze kit. Yes. Because when you were changing my bandages, what ended up being helpful was the nonstick gauze, the mm -hmm. big pads, not the little pieces. Yeah. And so definitely uh, more big panels of nonstick gauze. Because you can always cut it down if you need to. Right. Um, and I would have honestly preferred an actual like wash rag, kind of like what they do to sponge bath people in the hospitals mm -hmm. instead of baby wipes. Um, because the baby wipes ended up kind of breaking my skin out or making me feel kind of greasy and like residue -y. Mm -hmm. But an actual like sponge bath, like wash rag would have, I think... I agree. Been something that would have been cool. Because my armpits stank by the end. It, it was, <laughs> yeah. Um, I get really hot and sweaty. And so all I could wear were the two huge pairs of sweatpants that we bought. Yes. I wish more than anything we would have gotten a big ass pair of athletic shorts. Because mm -hmm. I was sweaty and I also couldn't shower. So These that need, was like, gross. Comfy clothes. Yeah, anything like, comfy that's easy to put on. And also sure. button-down, oversized button-down shirts would be perfect. And I think most importantly, um, I would have loved an extra post-op compression vest. Mm -hmm. That thing fucking smelled like a dead animal by the end. Um, and I think part of it was my insurance, <laughs> which is why they didn't send us home with more than one. Yeah. But they are readily available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You can go to Amazon or honestly any you know online store like that. And get any kind of compression vest. But I would get the ones that have like Velcro on top. Yeah. Because that helped. Um, yes. Getting you in and out of it. Yeah, yeah. It was really wild to see to like look back on this and see the progression of healing because I feel like it happened so fast. I feel like it it just it took no time at all for it to go from, you know, freshly done tubes out of my body to where I'm at now. But, um, yeah, it was really wild seeing it go from, you know, the way it was on day one to the way it was on day 10, even then to the way it was on, like, day 14 were three very different looks. Oh, and, yes. you know, there were some important milestones that I ended up hitting, like, the first time I was in a pool with my shirt off. <laughs> we ended up documenting it heavily because it was just so, such a cool feeling at 27 years old to finally have you know, be able to have that moment and, you know, seeing the color and my nipple come back and all of these things, um, were just really cool. It was really cool to, to experience. And I feel like it happened in the blink of an eye. And also the pandemic didn't really help that. No. <laughs> and the most recent photos that I have, like at the beach, that was my first time being shirtless at the beach. And being like out in the sun, covered in um, sunscreen. <laughs> no shortage of sunscreen there. So really, uh, when it comes to my plans for the future, there are only three main goals that I have. And that is to get my nipples tattooed, um, just to even out the color. I'm happy with the way my nipples are. I'm very glad that I went that route instead of going the route of no nipples. Um, but I would just like the color to be a little bit more even. Mm -hmm. um, I would want some amount of weight loss just to thin out my underarms. Uh, I don't have dog ears, which is where you get um, kind of an overlap of tissue due to the placement of the incision. But I do have a lot of tissue underneath my arms that I would like to um, kind of flatten out. And that's just with weight loss and muscle building. And... There is the potential in my future for a revision because on my right incision, there is a part that um, 
my old areola was left. So right in the middle of my incision underneath my nipple is like a brown spot um, that I'm not a fan of, but that's kind of up in the air if that's even something that I would want to do. Yeah. So yeah, those are kind of my, my general plans for the future. So this is my chest. A year and 10-ish months later. <laughs> Nothing new to report. Do you like it? <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Peace.